as discussed, Workers' Party of Britain leader George Galloway overturned a Labour majority in the Rochdale by-election last night, Labour having withdrawn support for their own candidate after alleged anti-Semitic remarks. Now, nonetheless, Galloway issued a warning for Sir Keir Starmer after his win. You have paid, and you will pay, a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging, and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza Strip. Yeah, look, during the campaign, George Galloway had said a lot of things. He's going to make the, the walls of Westminster quake. Subsequently as well to that, a little bit later on in the evening, uh, he said that he was primed and ready to go. They had about 59 candidates ready to stand in other seats and that they were either going to just beat Labour outright or take enough votes off them that it meant that they lost anyway. How big a threat is this for Keir Starmer? Let's speak to someone who can tell us a little bit more. He's been at the heart of the George Galloway story for quite a while. Good to see you. It's James Giles. Yes, yeah, so look, is this Keir Starmer's worst nightmare then? Yeah, Patrick, I really do think it is. There are swathes of constituencies across the country uh, where the majority is uh, not enough for Labour, given their current stance. And I think uh, George is right. There are 60, I actually make it about 80 seats, uh, where an independent uh, or a Workers' Party candidate uh, would undoubtedly uh, sway the result significantly. OK, all right. I mean, I suppose the question is, what's George going to do on his first day in Westminster? What's his, what's his big speech? What's going to happen? What's he got planned? Well, look, uh, it's customary for the winner of a by-election to be called at the first Prime Minister's questions uh, after their win. Uh, and I fully expect uh, George to be on his feet in the chamber, uh, in his usual manner and style, uh, in there with a bang, uh, to the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, especially after uh, his uh, comments this evening. Uh, well, yes, I mean, we should mention that, actually. So uh, Rishi Sunak did say uh, that, I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said that George Galloway is not a particularly nice chap and was an extremist and was endorsed by Nick Griffin of the, uh, the racist Nick Griffin of the British National Party. So he mentioned George by name. Um, I believe George has hit back saying that he, he doesn't care much for the Prime Minister either, does he? What's George's view on the latest that Rishi Sunak has actually had to say about him then? Yeah, well, I think George's view is he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, you know, George is a prolific uh, tweeter, social media uh, user, mm. and has uh, several million followers across his platforms, um, and has hit back uh, resoundingly. Wow. You know, there's been baseless claims by many people of, uh, goodness, uh, you know, intimidation, aggression. Uh, the only uh, mm. crimes reported to the police during this by-election... Uh, were the case of one uh, nutter approaching Simon Danchuk uh, and three of our banners being criminally damaged and stolen. Uh, yeah. Apart from that, any other claims are entirely uh, baseless. And clearly, the people of Rochdale uh, have sent George into Parliament with a thumping majority. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm going to... Um... Uh, just steer away from some of the claims. I'm aware that there is an active case involved here, so let's just uh, let's swerve some of those things. But um, when it comes to George's potential role in disrupting the Labour Party, when we had this now absolutely infamous ceasefire vote uh, two Wednesdays ago now, what happened there was arguably Keir Starmer being saved from a massive Labour rebellion, both front and back bench, of, according to The Guardian, around 100 MPs. Well, then, if you plonk George Galloway into the middle of those benches and there's another ceasefire vote, which eventually there will be, then realistically, could we see a situation where a load of Labour MPs end up siding unashamedly with George Galloway? Yeah, I think we could. Uh, there are swathes of Labour MPs uh, who agree almost entirely uh, with what George has to say uh, on the issue of Gaza. But due to the uh, authoritarian leadership under Sir Keir Starmer, anyone who dares speak out, even in the most mild of ways, seemingly gets suspended from their role uh, in the Labour Party. 
Mm. Uh, but this result, I think, will make every Labour MP sit up straight uh, and listen, because they know if they don't listen to people, uh, will come the general election, they're going to be in just a little bit of trouble. Yeah, but the, the other fact is that Keir Starmer can't really stand up to George Galloway or anyone, can he? Because he, he is, I mean, he's been trying to cling on to the uh, political demographic that George is targeting anyway. So, I mean, Keir Starmer can't really come out and slam George, can he? Uh, well, you, you could say that, but let's wait and see. I'm sure he'll try and find a way. I mean, you would want him to, though, wouldn't you, is the thing? Well, no, look, we, we want George to be able to present his case in Parliament. His views are backed, according to the opinion polls, by the vast majority of the British public and indeed by the vast majority of the public around the world. People want a ceasefire. People want an end mm. to the killing of innocent women and children. And that's a voice uh, in Parliament uh, who mm. will advocate more fiercely for that, I think, than any other MP currently on the Green Benches. Is he going to run to be Mayor of London, do you think? No. No, absolutely not? No. Really? OK, interesting. Interesting. All right. And he's, you, think he's going to, you think he's going to stay on in Rochdale, uh, fight the next one, as and when we have a general election there? He's not got sights on a safer seat. There's, you know, there's talk of Bethnal Green and all of these places. He's not going to have a bit, a bit on that, is he? No, no. I mean, look, this... Uh... <laughs> I really don't like talk of safe seats myself. No one is entitled to votes. No one party is entitled. No one candidate is entitled. You have to fight mm. for every vote. Um, you know, the next election, George has already said publicly, will be his last term in Parliament if he's elected. So the way he sees it, it's a fixed term, potentially five-year contract with the people of Rochdale. OK, all right. And final, very final question, James. Is there no concern at all about the potential for a relatively, and I, I, I appreciate that I, what I'm about to say could be taken out of contest, a relatively militant base here, right, where people have been accused of, you know, being very agitated about the situation in Gaza. Uh, there have been claims of, you know, some quite rowdy support for George Galloway. Do you think that maybe there are potential issues there that George has really ramped up tensions as opposed to actually, you know, really achieving anything? Well, look, the man who's ramped up tensions was Azar Ali, who made uh, a series of crank claims. Um, you know, the, the man, in his own words, made claims that were stupid, mm. false. Uh, these are his words, with, not With respect, mine. The, the Chris uh, Williamson was on, was on GB News last night and did. I mean, it took him all of about five minutes to bring up Auschwitz and make a comparison between that and what's going on in Gaza. I mean, he said there's, there's more people being killed by Israel in uh, in the Gaza Strip than, than were, well, than, than I, were if, um, if may, kill, killed every day. If, if, I, if I may, yeah. Chris lives in Derby. We're talking about George's election in Rochdale. I was in Rochdale every day, uh, bar a few, uh, when I was down here in London. Uh, mm. And I witnessed the campaign firsthand. Any accusations there was anything intimidatory going on, frankly, is for the birds. And it's clearly for the birds, based on the fact that not a single complaint about any of our uh, campaigner's conduct was uh, questioned or complained about. OK. All right. Look, thank you very much, James. I do hope to talk to you again in the future because uh, this is this well, is well, this well. is going to be big news for a long time. The fact is you put George Galloway in somewhere and uh, a lot happens. A lot happens. Look.